All right, so um, because I'm putting uh, food videos on YouTube, I am legally obligated to make the Ratatouille from the movie Ratatouille starring Ratatouille, this magical talking rat, um, which is basically a vegetable stew that comes from like France and Northern Italy, I think. Uh, and then they made, like, for the movie, they made, a, like, a fancified version of it. But it's actually, like, it remains very simple and doesn't require anything, like, special or, or uh, you know, any techniques that are super-duper complicated. It's actually, like, fairly easy to make and less fancy than it ends up looking. Uh, so what I have here are Roma tomatoes, yellow squash, zucchini, an eggplant, and I specifically chose the long, thin, I believe Japanese eggplants, but um, if you can't get these, you can always get a regular big round eggplant and just cut the pieces into smaller pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to get super thin circular slices of all of these vegetables. I'm going to take all of this and cut it down to really thin circles uh, and then um, continue from there. So, I guess I'll start with the zucchini. I've chosen specifically ones that are pretty even in thickness all the way down. Can't really do that with these, but, um, that, that helps you get, like, sort of even circles. So I'm gonna cut the end off of this. And then, oh, if you have a mandolin, use a mandolin. Uh, It'll make it a whole lot easier. I don't have one because I don't really use it for much of anything. But for this, uh, because I don't have one, I am just using a knife. You don't have to be super exact with this. But I'm just trying to get like kind of the thinnest circular slice that I can. And I'm just going to go down this whole thing and really... Adjust as I go and get extremely thin slices of these. And then once I've uh, cut this whole thing, I'm going to go over to this and I've got a cookie sheet with paper towel on it. And then I'm just going to lay these down in a single layer. And then once you've covered the whole thing with a single layer, you can throw down just like a light sprinkling of salt and pepper. Oh my goodness. Uh, do that over the whole thing. Lay down another piece of a paper towel and then keep going until you've cut through all of these vegetables in that same way. Um, and then just leave it out at room temperature. Uh, cover the last layer with another paper towel. Leave it out at room temperature overnight and then finish it the next day. What you're doing there is drying out the vegetables a little bit and flavoring them a little bit so that when you make the final thing it's not too watery. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna come back to this tomorrow. All right, so I've sliced all of those vegetables that you saw into really thin slices, as thin as I could get them, just with a knife. Again, if you don't have a mandolin, it's just time consuming. Just hang out, listen to podcasts. I highly recommend cool people who did cool stuff. As you can see, I've got layers of paper towel in between all of them, and I've sprinkled just a light dusting of salt and pepper on all of them. I'm gonna lay one more uh, paper towel over the top of those and leave it on the counter overnight and that will slightly dry out the vegetables and prepare them for the next step. All right, it is the next day, midday, and I'm turning on a burner up high and I'm putting a red bell pepper on it. We're gonna roast this until the skin is mostly black.
and I'm using two of these. Um, what we're making right now is a tomato and red pepper sauce, which we're going to cook for a while in a saucepan and then puree. Um, if you've never done this before, it is pretty much as easy as it gets. Just have some tongs. As parts of it start turning black, just turn it. And then eventually you will end up with it pretty much black all over and then you can just sort of like wipe the burnt stuff off and then you'll have a nice like soft roasted bell pepper that you can toss into the sauce later. If you hear that popping noise, that's good. That's the skin crackling. Sort of keep going with this until you get all the angles. All right, it's been there for a couple of minutes and you're starting to see all the different angles of it turning black. And I am just continuously turning it and trying to put all of the still raw parts of it right over where the flame is. And I want to talk about the slogan that gets repeated a lot, kill the cop in your head. Because I've been thinking about it lately, and I think I've sort of unlocked uh, exactly, you know, at least a little bit more precisely what it means. And I think what it means is like best summed up in the Martin Luther King letter from a Birmingham jail essay in which he talks about the white moderate who prefers order to justice, who prefers the negative peace that is the absence of tension over the positive peace that is the presence of justice. And I think that part of you that that wants to have some kind of order, whether or not it is just, that's the cop talking. And you're probably going to have to kill that cop many times over the course of your life, because I think if you're actually introspective, you will notice that guy keep coming back. And you need to be ever vigilant because he will rise from the dead many times. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and call that good and pull that and start on the second one and do the exact same thing and then we'll come back. All right, so those are our fire roasted bell peppers. I'm just letting them cool for a little bit and I'm gonna start putting together our tomato red pepper sauce. I would normally use whole canned tomatoes for this, but I ran out. So I've, I have this can of crushed tomatoes and I'll just use that. Um, so, simple, you know, tomato red pepper sauce very quick. I'm going with a shallot, garlic, basil, tomatoes and red peppers, olive oil, salt and pepper. That's, that's really all you need it to be. I'm gonna cut this kind of medium fine, but again, I'm pureeing this whole sauce, so I'm not being picky about what sizes of pieces I'm getting here. That's perfectly good for our purposes here. I'm just using a small pot. 
I love cast iron, but this is not something to use cast iron with. When you're using like tomatoes or anything really acidic, it will pull metals out of the pot and into the food. It's not dangerous or unhealthy, it just messes up the flavor. Don't be afraid of olive oil. It's good stuff. You can use plenty of it. And don't be afraid of heat. You can use plenty of that too. I'm gonna wait for that to get hotter and work on my garlic. This might be sacrilege to some people, but I am a believer that there is such a thing as too much garlic. That said, this sauce needs to be extremely like dense and flavorful. We're gonna put a lot of stuff in it and cook it down until it's really potent. And here's what I usually like to do with garlic. I cut the little fibers part off of the bottom. Crush it pretty much as much as I can with the side of the knife. Pull the paper off. And then all of those split pieces, I just bunch up together again and chop it down and then you get a nice like small bits of garlic there. Uh, I don't really have a garlic press because I never really saw much need for it and they're hard to clean. Um, That's our oil getting hot. In goes the shallots. Salt and pepper. We have put quite, uh, we've put like a light dusting of salt and pepper in between every little piece of vegetable that we sliced yesterday, which means this is gonna, you can really overdo it on the salt and pepper in the sauce because there's going to be a lot of it coming from the vegetables. So I'm gonna let that keep cooking and toss the garlic in. And this stuff cooks pretty quickly. 
You want to just let it go right up to just before it starts burning without letting it burn. Then when you need to stop it, just toss in your tomatoes and then you're, you're safe. And I'll just use this whole thing, why not? Once that's in, I'll turn the heat down to fairly low so that it'll just simmer and not come to like a really violent boil and splatter tomatoes everywhere. toss in a handful of basil leaves and let those just steep in the tomatoes. The last of this bottle of red wine, totally optional, but doesn't hurt. If you don't have wine, but you do have vodka, that also gets you some nice flavor out of some tomatoes. But you can also totally leave it out and it will work just fine. And then if we pop back over here, I'm gonna just Take these tomatoes and just pull the most burnt bits off of it. You don't have to get every little bit of this because that will add some nice flavor. You just don't want to overdo it or so it doesn't taste doesn't make the whole thing taste burnt. And it just sticks to your hands, so you just rinse it off of your hands. And we'll get this one. And then we're just gonna rough chop these. I'm gonna sort of just cut down the side and pull the stem and the seed pods out. And then just kind of, it's gonna be some water coming off of it. Uh, slice them lengthwise. Again, we're pureeing this. I'm not being picky about how big these pieces are.
All right, roasted red peppers in the sauce. And then, uncovered, leave it uncovered, bring it to a simmer, and then just let it do its thing for, it can be an hour, it can be multiple hours. Just kind of let it go. Let it, let all of this stuff cook together, soften, and then a little bit later, we're gonna come back to it and blend it all up into a puree. Okay, so while that sauce is cooking down, we're gonna take all of the slices that we made yesterday. I'm gonna sit down for this. Um, and stack them into little stacks of all four different kinds. So I'm gonna, just gonna lay down a bunch of these tomato slices on my cutting board. Until the whole thing is covered. These vary a bit in size because they are vegetables and they vary. Um, so as we go along, you're gonna see me sort of matching up stuff of similar sizes so that the stacks are nice and neat. Okay. So I'm going to peel that off and start adding eggplants to all of these. And I'm going to try, the eggplants are much more even in their diameter than the other vegetables because I use those Japanese ones. But as I go, I'm just going to try to put the biggest ones with the other biggest ones. Okay, now I'm going to start moving on to the yellow squash. The yellow squash is going to have the greatest variety because it has that narrow part and that thick part. So I'm going to find the biggest slices of tomatoes. And then if you do end up sort of pairing up things of different sizes, match up one edge. Rather than centering all of them, push them all to one edge so that at least one side of them has the edges all together. That's going to make your presentation really nice.
got it. more yellow squash. Finishing off the last few of these. Two more. Okay, now moving on to the zucchini. These are also quite a bit more uniform in size, except that I did get two different size ones, so those will give me some larger pieces. And now I am completing these stacks of four. And the pattern is just gonna repeat. Where, So, once you have completed all of these stacks, Now, you can just start stacking them together. You're going, let's see, this time I went with tomato, eggplant, yellow squash, zucchini, but it really doesn't matter what order you do. That just happens to have been the order they were stacked in before. And I'm just going to make some bigger stacks to give myself room on my workspace to then repeat this process until all of my vegetables are stacked together in this repeating pattern, red, purple, yellow, green. And then I'll uh, cut to where I've got all of them finished. Okay, so as I go along, as I sort of start running out of tomato slices and I am uh, uh, trying to match different pieces up. If you have some like small pieces to match up with big pieces, you can always throw a few in there. I didn't count how many of each one that I made. I'm just putting these together however I think they look best. Okay, so I have now run out of tomatoes, so now I'm just going to start stacking all of the rest of what I have left in the same order, and I'm just going to have some of these stacks be missing a couple of things. And, uh, you know, when I, when I put this all together, I'm going to try to, you know, distribute these sort of shorter stacks throughout, so, you know, the, the ultimate effect will be that everything is still well distributed throughout the dish. But I've now laid down... All of the rest of the eggplant that I have, I'm going to lay down all of the rest of the yellow squash that I have, and then the rest of the zucchini, and then I will have all of my sacks ready. Okay, my sauce has been cooking for a little while, a lot of the water has steamed off of it, and it's now time to puree it. So, if you have an immersion blender, that makes this a lot easier, but I don't have one, so I'm just going to put it in a regular blender. In it goes.
Okay. Careful about that popping off. When you're blending something hot, sometimes you really gotta hold that lid down. Unless you have one of those ones with a locking lid. I think we're in good shape. You got a nice, like, smooth pureed sauce. And here's our casserole dish. We're just gonna lay down a layer of that sauce. Looks like I've made a little bit more than I needed. So I can just have that with some pasta later if I want. And I do. Over here. And then how we're going to assemble this is here's all my stacks. These are the ones that are incomplete where I didn't have all four things. So they're not complete stacks. So I'm just going to try to like add those to some of these stacks throughout rather than put them all together. And I'm going to start from one corner. and work my way around the entire edge of it in a spiral. Adding little bits of these incomplete stacks as I go and sort of, I'm gonna sort of slightly fan these out. And you can fit a surprising amount of this stuff in here. Like, you saw how many, how much vegetables we started with. It's gonna fit in a surprisingly small space. And you're just sort of like taking, you know, the side where we put the edges together so they all stack up. I'm trying to like aim to put those edges on the top so you get this nice like rainbow effect. And sort of fan these out as I turn a corner here. If you have enough of these vegetables, you can stack them pretty much right on their ends and fit even more in there. If you ended up doing a bit less vegetables, you can just sort of fan them out so that they're, they lay a little bit flatter so they still fill the whole casserole dish. But again, there's really no reason you shouldn't get as much of this in there as you can possibly fit. And it's gonna displace some of the sauce. The sauce is gonna get in between in the cracks there. run out of room, you can just kind of fill in some cracks with little mini stacks. Get 
that in there wherever they'll go and there we've got all of them we've managed to fit all of them in there and that is our casserole and we're going to finish that by sprinkling some herbs over the top of it this is just basil but you can add thyme or oregano or parsley whatever else you happen to have that you think would fit this just happens to be what i had in the fridge and then, very important, you're going to drizzle the whole thing over with olive oil. So the name of this dish, this variation on ratatouille, is confit bialdi, um, which makes it a confit dish, which if you saw my, uh, my fried chicken rep recipe, it's basically when you submerge something in oil and then cook it slowly rather than deep frying where you're submerging something in oil and cooking it at really high temperatures. So I have preheated my oven to 300 and I've coated this whole thing in olive oil. I'm not finishing it with salt and pepper because again, there's so much little bits of salt and pepper in between all of those vegetables. So, in it goes, and it's going to be in there for probably a good hour and a half. I'm going to check it after an hour and see how it is, but you've got a lot of wiggle room. I like an hour and a half. It's going to like cook all of those vegetables all the way through, and you'll see how it turns out. All right, see you in a little while. Okay, been about an hour and a half. Turn the oven off and check this out. So, part of the fun part of this is the plating. And the best way I've found to do it is with a butter knife and fork. You just kind of start wherever. I guess I'll start about here. Slip a butter knife in between the layers. And get a stack of it with a fork. Whoop. We'll try that again. <laughs> and just, uh, you know... Make a little decorative, little decorative tower. Then, with a spoon, just get some of that sauce with the oil and the herbs in it, and then just, you know, you do, you do your little decorative little, like, streak of sauce around the outside of it and for me I like to finish it I have this like um, finishing salt smoked sea salt just like a couple flakes of that on top and a little bit of balsamic vinegar this is extremely good let me tell you it's like a good pepperoni pizza except it is entirely vegan without any kind of uh, need for modifications to the standard recipe to make it vegan. Um, I highly recommend trying this. It's inexpensive, it's not super complicated, and it's, uh, it's something that's like really satisfying comfort food.